My name is Andrei Kochetov. Uh, I'm a leader of uh, one of the leader of trade union of Lugansk People's Republic, and uh, also I am member of uh, Council uh, of uh, trade union of Lugansk People's Republic. So, representing what kind of workers and how many? Uh, in trade union. Yes, yes, in the union. Uh-huh. Uh, in my union, uh, something like uh, uh, five and a half uh, thousand people, but in general, in uh, Lugansk People's Republic, about uh, two hundred thousand people. Okay, and what is your what, what is your union? Sorry, it, it, just just sorry, to... sorry. Uh, in my trade union. Uh, five thousand and half. Okay, uh, and what what is your union representing? What kind of workers? Uh, in the other branch uh, of industry, but uh, the name is uh, in- innovative. Oh, I, I forget. Just, just I, I try to find the uh, English right uh, name of my trade union because um, in Russian it uh, uh, in, uh, innovation something like that but uh, it's difficult so to find is, is this like engineering or research uh, no 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 uh, you see uh, it's uh, more uh, connective to industry in, in, in industrial uh, workers ok so um uh, what kind of industry will the workers be working in? Where, where will we find your members? Uh, we have, uh, as I told you, uh, other branches, uh, for example, uh, the uh, uh, factory which produces uh, water, the factory which produce, uh, which um, uh, connecting to the uh, metal industry, uh, also, uh, how to see English metal workers, uh, and and so on. Okay, so can you can you just uh, say the name of the union in Russian? Profsoyuz Innovatsionnych i Malych Predpriyatiy. Okay, it's a bit of a mouthful for anyone in English. But anyway, look, uh, in, take us... In, in, innovative and small uh, small enterprises. Oh, uh, okay. Well, anyway, uh, can you take us through your, uh, your journey uh, since 2014, please? What's been going on in your life? Mm, it was... Uh, it was a war against... Uh, I... I uh, as for me, it was a civil war against the uh, central government, uh, uh, um, against the region uh, of Donbass, because uh, the people uh, of Donbass just said uh, they they, uh, they wanted uh, to be uh, how to say uh, listened uh, by government. But uh, for government, uh, as it turned out, uh, it was uh, much easier to use a regular army against our people. So, so, so okay. So, why was the Donbass, the southeast region of Ukraine, why was it that they didn't want to accept the new government after the coup? What, why that region? You, you see, it was uh, not immediately. Uh, but from the uh, first uh, so-called uh, called Maidan, uh, which took part in the 2004, uh, and uh, the uh, President Yushchenko, uh, he uh, divided in uh, his slogan the country uh, for the um, into the um, the biggest part, uh, this is the real and good Ukrainians, and uh, eastern part of Ukraine, bad Ukrainians, because they uh, people of Russian culture. Uh, you see, from the uh, Soviet Union, 
uh, it was the very big industrial region. And after the Second World War, the government invited people from other regions of the Soviet Union to Donbass uh, to work, to rise up the industry on the, of the Soviet Union. And that's why it's, um, this region is uh, uh, multinational. And uh, that's why uh, you see it was always uh, a little different part of Ukraine. But uh, uh, as for me and many, many people, we use uh, Ukrainian language, we use um, Ukrainian habits and, and, uh, and, we, and without any problem. Uh, more of this, in the Soviet uh, time, we uh, study Ukrainian language uh, in our schools uh, without any problem. Uh, so as for me, I think that it was uh, uh, Yushchenko prepared the future attack against the people of Donbass, as for me. Uh, because now I understand that uh, before uh, 2004, uh, I never heard about that uh, Donbass is something strange uh, for uh, the rest part of Ukraine or something like that. Uh, but now the situation, uh, not now, but uh, uh, after the Yushchenko um, announcement, uh, they step by step, day by day, uh, they started to say that the Donbass people is not good Ukrainians. And uh, in 2014, the people rise up and said, please, uh, listen to us. We are the uh, Ukrainian people. But as I told you that uh, they uh, decided to fight uh, against us by regular army. Yes? Yes. So uh, can you tell us about that experience? That must have been rather worrying to have the army turning up uh, instead of the police. Uh, you see, it was a big fake. Uh, because, you know, they uh, called... Uh, the military operation as the anti-terroristic operation. It was especially for the people of Western countries because many people decided that operation against terrorism, it means that uh, police and forces uh, try to find some terrorists and so on. But they never said that they use a real army with tanks, with aircrafts, and so on. So, uh, as for me, it was... Um, uh, they play uh, tricks uh, with uh, governments of uh, Western countries. You know that uh, many... Uh, um, uh, people from uh, other countries uh, came to Ukraine to support Maidan and so on and so on. Uh, yeah. Yes, so uh, that's true. Yes, the special forces, I think you'll probably find this week down in Niger and other African countries, those special forces have, um, are down there in, in order to try and reverse a coup because that, we know that the coup uh, is a good coup or a bad coup. Uh, I mean, the idea that you're overthrowing a democratic government doesn't really mean anything anymore because some of those democratic governments aren't democratic at all. Uh, anyway, uh, if you um, if you go to uh, uh, that part of the the, the world, didn't did, am I right in thinking? Because this is a, a, a very small piece of my memory that we had one of the uh, Donbass governors or presidents of one of those regions actually assassinated. Uh, assassinated? What, what 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 does it mean? I don't remember this word. Uh, well, uh, was was one of the uh, the um, leaders of the Donbass uh, murdered, killed, assassinated? Oh yes, yes, uh, Zakharchenko. 
um, you see, um, anyway, um, we, we know, we know that uh, Ukrainian use, uh, how to say, their all bad uh, kinds of war. Uh, for example, they killed the, one of the leader of uh, DPR, uh, Alexander Zakharchenko. And you see, they never uh, even tried to hide uh, it. Uh, that uh, they always were proud. Yes, we killed him. I mean, do we know how or who how he was killed? Because this is must be something which is well known in the Donbass. Uh, uh, British British people know nothing about this. Uh, so, who killed him and how? Okay, he he has a habit uh, not far from his office. Um, he uh, often uh, went to the uh, one little restaurant uh, with the uh, name Separatist and uh, he go there for a dinner and uh, um, the, the, there is a small cor- corridor between two doors and when uh, he came in uh, this uh, small corridor, something like uh, two or three meters, uh, the uh, electricity lamp uh, exposed uh, above his head. And his body was damaged uh, terribly. Okay. Yeah, so... Uh, uh... Uh, how how did um, what were the main events? Do you think between uh, twenty fourteen and now uh, to the, uh, the when the Russians uh, troops came in? Because I think we need to understand. Uh, obviously, the the twenty fourteen coup, the Maidan coup, uh, was really the West's and the European Union putting their person in charge uh, of Ukraine. And so the idea that this is a, a sovereign country is really not true. Uh, but what were the main events on the way to from there to uh, to getting getting the Russians arriving on your doorstep? Uh, you see, as for me, uh, that uh, the uh, Kiev uh, government and uh, government from uh, Western countries is very, very shy. Uh, but uh, we knew very well that Ukrainian army during the uh, period uh, of so-called uh, Minsk agreements, uh, they uh, teach their soldiers uh, they uh, prepare to the uh, war against uh, our region, and uh, they uh, what they did, they uh, prepared everything to attack our territory, and uh, we we knew it very well uh, because the huge massive of military troops. Uh, came to our territory. Uh, I uh, heard uh, the number is uh, more than uh, 1,200. Uh, uh, no, uh, yes, uh, 120,000 people, yes. Uh, the, uh, the, um, these military uh, troops divided in two big groups. Uh, one of this group uh, um, was uh, near uh, Mariupol in the south of the Donbass region. And the uh, other one is uh, near Lysychansk on the uh, north part. of, uh, And uh, they uh, prepared to divide our territory in two parts. And uh, they uh, loudly said that we prepared the... Uh, concentration camps and during five years we will uh, examine uh, the uh, activity of all people of Donbass and we decided who will uh, stay alive or uh, who uh, will be dying and so on and uh, we knew it very well but now 
all, all, all uh, Western governments completely forget about it. Uh, and uh, for our people, the Putin is uh, not uh, just came to liberate us. Uh, for us, they, uh, he came to defend us. And we know that he had a very big reason to do it. Okay? Yeah, so what's that reason? Uh, the reason that uh, the Ukrainian army prepared to attack us and to kill us. Well, uh, how did he know that? Uh, because uh, you see, they uh, even even tried to hide it. Uh, they said uh, loudly on the TV. Uh, we got many information from our relatives from uh, that side uh, that they prepare. Uh, they uh, gather uh, many uh, tanks and other techniques. So it wasn't a big secret. Hmm. Uh, okay, so uh, what was life uh, in the Donbass like between 2014 and 2022, that, that, those eight years? Uh, it, it really was the Minsk agreements, was it, Peace? Uh, it's difficult to say, uh, yes. Uh, it, um, there were not a very big activities on the front line, but uh, in, in any way, we heard uh, some time for time the uh, artillery sound. Uh, as I told you, they uh, use uh, spies against our leaders uh, and, and so on. But uh, it, it maybe it's possible to say that the situation uh was rather stable uh before 20 uh, uh 22 but uh, we understood very well that uh, ukraine uh, is not going to stop uh, on this situation and uh, they they will prepare to attack us uh and uh, you see they uh, always said that we need donbas but they never said that they need the population of Donbass. Uh, do you feel the difference between these uh, statements? Oh, yes. Well, I'm sure that's not lost on a lot of people. Now, some of my uh, trade union friends in Britain, uh, they point to um, a, a really hor horrendous event in Odessa. Uh, now, can you just explain what happened there? Uh, this is around the time of the coup, isn't it? Maybe later on that year, I think. Uh, please, please ask one more time. I, I, yeah. I didn't uh, catch it. Some of my friends in the unions here in Britain, yeah. uh, they they say something terrible happened in Odessa. That is, the the Kiev government oh. did something oh, really bad. Oh, so, oh. so maybe maybe you can just uh, explain what happened there. Uh, you see, um, uh, it was understandable for us that. Uh, Ukrainian want uh, to find uh, to fight against uh, our people. I mean the uh, leftists, okay? Uh, and our people, uh, especially young people, uh, try to prepare to fight against um, uh, them. But but the main uh, mistake was that. Uh, they, I mean Nazi, already came to kill. Our people came to fight. They were uh, prepared to fight against, uh, but fight, uh, fight, uh, fight uh, by arms or legs or something like that. Nothing special. They came already killed. Uh, to, to kill uh, the, uh, our people and uh, I have some friends uh, two friends uh, who was there in Odessa in a trade union building and uh, they say that uh, there were many propositions to um, uh, go away 
from this place. But one uh, of my friend uh, told me that, you see, uh, it was something like a provocation. Because uh, he told me that he never uh, saw these guys. But they say, no, no, came into the building, came into the building, came into the building, uh, try to hide and uh, try to defend, uh, defend uh, ourselves and, and, so, uh, and so on. And uh, you see uh, the Ukrainian said that uh, 58 people were killed there. But many, many people said that something about uh, 300 20 people were killed because uh, Ukraine uh, they uh, completely closed the building uh, uh, during the next day by uh, uh, how to how to say the more big offense no offense how to say English uh, uh, they, they um, you see they built uh, the walls uh, around this uh, building, which were burnt, and uh, n- uh, never uh, stay that uh, 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 nobody knows what they did uh, uh, behind these walls. You see, uh, and especially for me, it was a most terrible thing that. Uh, they uh, in a very cruel way uh, killed many people never mind how many uh, 28 or 300 never mind they burned people alive and um, uh, the whole world uh, look at this picture and nobody said that we need to stop it. How is possible? Okay. Yeah, you, you're talking about the Nazis. Uh, I mean, you know, old Zelensky himself, he is Jewish. So how can he be running a country with Nazis in? Uh, uh, Tony, uh, who told that the, uh, to be Jewish... It's impossible to be Nazi. Well, uh, wasn't it Hitler? Uh, you see, it's difficult uh, for me to say why the Jewish guy uh, who is uh, who was um, uh, never a politician came to uh, President uh, Chia uh, and. Uh, decided to uh, continue the war. Uh, If you uh, uh, became a leader, the uh, main task for you to stop uh, the war, to stop killing people. But you see now he refused against any conversation with the Russian Federation. So uh, it is really so he decided to continue this war uh, until the uh, last Ukrainian will killed, will be killed. Okay. So, so what about these Nazis? Are they real? Is there really Nazis there? I mean, this seems to be maybe just Russian propaganda. <laughs> uh, 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 you see, the uh, Nazi and. Uh, Especially the unpunished Nazi, they never hide uh, their nature. Uh, it's not difficult. Try to find in YouTube uh, many uh, uh, clips of uh, soldiers of Azov. Uh, try to examine their tattoos. They body their whole body in the Nazi symbols. What do you think? They just uh, a game for them? No, it is the uh, real faith 
for them. And uh, the uh, Ukrainian government and the government of the Western countries try to keep close the eyes, uh, eyes, their eyes closed, because it is very comfortable for them that somebody uh, going uh, to fight against Russia. I think that's all. But we uh, know that they are real Nazi. We know it very well. And they never tried even to hide it. Okay. Yeah. So um, okay. So uh, what? So what's uh, the situation like now uh, for you and your life, and for people in the Donbass? Uh, you see, for um, uh, now we are the part of uh, Russia Federation. Uh, so, uh, in especially in Lugansk, the situation is. Uh, no, they come because we are uh, uh, far from uh, front line. But now the Western countries uh, try uh, to support the Ukrainian uh, army, and they give uh, some uh, some artillery rockets and so on with a big distance. Uh, so uh, from time uh, to time, we. Uh, have uh, explosions on the territory of the uh, Lugansk city. But anyway, the situation is uh, rather stable in here. Uh, but in uh, Donetsk and Gorlovka, the situation uh, not so good because the front line is uh, too, uh, uh, too close to the cities and uh, the people suffer. Uh, civilian people uh, suffer from uh, uh, artillery shellings. But uh, anyway, we are uh, full of optimism and uh, we hope that uh, Russia will win and uh, our soldiers will, will win and uh, Nazis were killed, uh, will kill, will be killed. Okay. Uh, are you concerned that maybe um, the NATO countries, the United States, Britain, France, Germany, might um, actually allow the Kiev and Zelensky to join NATO? Because that could be a really big war, couldn't it? Uh, you can just uh, see how uh, how many uh, money they spent uh, to support the Kiev. So they push Zelensky uh, to continue the war. Okay. Yeah. So what? Now, what I'm saying is, isn't it a bit worrying for somebody like you in the Donbass uh, to uh, that that maybe Zelensky and the NATO countries will become one? Uh, be, become ah uh, one. Uh, you see, uh, we uh, we don't believe in it uh, because you see the I I, I, I don't I don't uh, how, how to explain you, but uh, in our people, among uh, our our uh, workers, uh, nobody believed that uh, the Zelensky was. Uh, also with support of uh, Western governments, uh, will win. No, we, we, we believe in our victory. Yes, but I mean, I was in uh, in Whitehall in London a few weeks ago and there's a, a demonstration, a small demonstration by Ukrainians and supporters in London uh, and they say, we will win, we will win. So they're saying the same as you. Uh, you see, uh, but uh, the little difference between us, I am in here, but they are in London. What they do, uh, uh, what, what they do in London, if you want to defend your country, please come to your country and, and go to the battlefield. They, uh, uh, you see, they uh, run away like rabbits from other countries. And from that uh, countries, they try to support something. It's you see, it's uh, just a funny. Next time you will see them, 
please uh, ask them what are you what are you doing in here please go to to battlefield and defend your country okay okay so um uh what do you see because we we've got a big problem haven't we in that when the uh, peace comes to ukraine as we all hope it will uh, the next thing that will happen is probably Ukraine will join NATO. Uh, but So so maybe uh, the peace, uh, what happens after the peace, could be worse than now. Uh, you see, uh, for, me, for me, the good future will, uh, when uh, will, uh, in Ukraine, uh, will be uh, the government... Uh, which will be uh, friendly to Russia and Belarus and uh, will never enjoy NATO because NATO just say that uh, this is the block uh, to defense. But uh, everyone can see uh, how many uh, steps they uh, did uh, to be closer to the Russia Federation uh, border. Uh, also, the United States. Uh, how many military bases uh, in uh, in the wor- uh, whole world? And they always say that we came to defense. I think it's not true. Um, so, uh, uh, what about uh, your family? Do you have family uh, over in the other side of Ukraine? Because, I mean, there must be quite a few families in Russia and Ukraine who have members of their family on both sides. Uh, you see, uh, as for me, I am Ukrainian, my wife is Ukrainian, my kids are Ukrainians. Uh, but uh, you see, it's a very strange situation because uh, the family of my wife, the uh, more Russians, but they use uh, Ukrainian language in their uh, family. Uh, my family uh, is uh, more Ukrainian, but uh, we use uh, more Russian language in our family. Uh, and uh, you see, um, also I, I would like to say that uh, before the 2014, uh, I was a big supporter of uh, the European Union. And uh, it was my dream that Ukraine uh, became the part of uh, European Union. But... Uh, uh, but by not uh, the price of uh, the killing many many people. Now uh, maybe uh, it's possible to say that I'm a big uh, supporter of uh, Russian Empire or Soviet Union, as you wish. Okay. So uh, let's take a step back from everything. Uh, you've you've pa- you've painted a very good picture there of what's going on now and some of the history. Uh, why is it that this conflict is taking place? If you're looking at the big superpowers, United States, China, Russia, uh, and the fights that are going on now in the Middle East, in Africa, uh, the tensions in other parts of the world like Taiwan and Korea, uh, we don't have a particularly happy world right now. Uh, but I wonder, where do you think the conflict going on in Ukraine fits into the bigger picture? What are the real motives here? Uh, you see, it was uh, not understandable for me uh, during the long time because I uh, was never involved in the uh, politician uh, questions or, or something like that. But um, after 2014... I started to communicate with the trade unions uh, from other countries. And people from other countries, especially from Western Europe, explained me that you can see uh, this is the Ukraine uh, now is better battle, uh, battlefield big, uh, between the big uh, players of the world. 
now uh, I understand that uh, the the Russia Federation is a uh, very big and very interesting uh, piece of cake uh, for uh, Western governments. And uh, now I understand that uh, the Russia uh, try to defend uh, not just Donbass. They try to de- de- defend themselves. Uh, because uh, we already told with you that uh, the NATO step by step, but uh, after the uh, 1991 came very, very close uh, to the uh, Russian borders. But uh, you see, uh, as for me, uh, the Ukrainian um, government during uh, 30 years uh, they uh, try uh, to use everybody, I mean uh, their Russia, I mean Western countries, uh, to use, uh, to organize their uh, life. But uh, they uh, thought they strong, but in reality the um, Western governments, uh, uh, how to say, uh, uh, turned out more stronger and uh, in uh, in my opinion and on my thoughts I think that uh, Ukrainian politicians sold their country completely to the western world and uh, when they sold everything uh, after that uh, the war So there are quite a few groups here in Britain, uh, including people from the Communist Party, the Socialist Workers' Party, uh, the Stop the War Coalition in London, where people like John Rees and Lindsay German, these are people who were big campaigners that brought millions out on the streets against uh, the Iraq War back in 2003, for example. Uh, that what they say is their their first demand is that Russia must leave Ukraine. That will help to stop the war. What what do you have to say to them? Uh, uh, to to the people uh, you mean to the people who is the communists. Well, we, like I say, we have uh, communist party members, and we have socialist yeah. wor- workers party members in London. Uh, Lindsay German and John Rees and people like this, what they say is that uh, to stop the war, and in fact they are part of this organisation, Stop the War Coalition, they say to stop the war, first the Russians must leave Ukraine. Uh, you see, uh, I would like to say um, to say uh, them, and say to everybody that uh, uh, try to do something that uh, your governments uh, not to support uh, Ukrainians, Ukrainian government. Uh, and uh, they are all uh, kind of war uh, will finish by conversation. And uh, if uh, the uh, Western countries will stop their support of uh, Nazi regime in Kiev, the uh, peace uh, came to us. Well, you know okay. what? It's funny because some would say the same about uh, Tel Aviv and Palestine. You know, if the American financial support for the Israeli government was to finish, so the oppression of the Palestinians would finish too. Um, so. Uh, okay, so uh, just finally, Andre, where are, where is a good place for the um, the British to go to find out what's happening? A more balanced view, because we get a very unbalanced, propagandistic view from the press here. Very little from the Russian point of view. In fact, nothing really. Uh, it's all uh, you know. Zelensky is a hero, and that sort of thing. So, are, are there websites in English that uh, we are still allowed to look at? Um, where 
or, or, or news channels, etc., where you can get some, some balanced views on, on what's happening in Ukraine? So explain one more time, because I lost right. uh, the meaning. Uh-huh. Uh, where can our listeners follow some uh, somewhere which is telling the truth about Ukraine? Yeah. Uh, you see, uh, I know that many people in the world uh, understand uh, the uh, real picture of the situation uh, in uh, Ukraine. And I know that many people support uh, us, uh, uh, but uh, not uh, the uh, activity of Zelensky. Uh, so uh, I would uh, like uh, to say to that people who really support us that uh, try to uh, unite in our fight uh, against the uh, Nazi regime in Kiev. Okay. Okay, Andre. Thanks very much for joining us, Andre Kochetov. Is that right? Yes, Kochetov. Yes, Kochetov. Yes, C H Kochetov. Okay, Andre Kochetov. Thanks very much for joining us. Okay, thank you very much, and uh, say hello to. Uh, all people, but especially to the people who uh, who try to support us.